It's Thursday, July 24th, and we're about to see a big change in our weather pattern that we've been seeing recently, where we've had some strong, severe weather pretty much across the Great Plains, through the Midwest, and up into the Great Lakes region. Today, we only have a marginal risk of severe weather. It's going to be a dogleg-shaped risk, which spans our entire Upper Plains sector of the Great Plains down into the Texas Panhandle, through the Central Plains, through the Midwest, and now into the Great Lakes region. This threat is going to be mostly wind fueled with the threat of some conditional gust exceeding 60 miles an hour. This covers our entire marginal risk area. And then our hail threat is going to be pretty isolated to our Upper Plains Convergence Zone out here in parts of Colorado, Wyoming, Western Nebraska, and even Western South Dakota. Now the SPC has not outlined a tornado threat today. They have said that is less than 2%. In all areas. Now, I do think there is a conditional threat for a couple of tornadoes in front of a couple of mesoscale convective vortexes. One is going to be out here in Kansas, which is going to push northeastward into parts of northwestern Missouri and southwestern Iowa. Then another one is going to be out here in Wisconsin. And I do think there could be the conditional threat of possibly a weak spin up tornado along those. Now, interestingly, it does look like there is a very low chance for some tropical development off the western coast of Florida in the coming days. This would put the areas pretty much anywhere on the Gulf Coast from Texas all the way up into parts of Mississippi at risk. All of this is currently only a 10%, so we're not going to do a deep dive on it today. But if it does increase in probability and if it starts increasing in probability rapidly, of formation, we definitely will take a deeper dive into it. Now, a big story in recent times has been the extreme heat wave impacting parts of the Central Plains, Mississippi River Valley, and even back in the southeast. And it is going to continue today and probably for the next couple of weeks. It looks like by the afternoon today, we could see some temperatures in the feels like region of Mississippi being north of 107 degrees. And that's really going to be centered on the Mississippi River Valley. That area is going to be receiving the greatest feels like temperatures for the next couple of days. And as we move further into the mid afternoon hours, it looks like our hottest temperatures are going to migrate a bit more westward into parts of the southern plains. So that would be eastern Texas, Oklahoma, and even Arkansas. Now it does look like we could see some excessive rainfall, which could lead to some flash flooding today across our risk area, which spans from Kansas through the Midwest and up into the Great Lakes region. And this slight risk is the greatest risk of rainfall we could see anywhere between two to four inches of rain with that two inches being widespread and that four inches being more isolated. Then we do have a couple of marginal risk out here. One is going to be from the Upper Plains all the way into the Great Lakes region. One is going to be up here in parts of northeastern California. Then one is going to be down here in the southeast and all of our marginal risk. There is the conditional threat for widespread swaths of one to two inches of rain. Now here's a look at what our weather is going to do from our Central Plains risk area today, specifically in that Kansas, Missouri, Iowa corridor. And it looks like we could see some redevelopment along a remnant mesoscale convective vortex starting along midday. This would bring the threat for possibly some very small hail, not very large at all, with mostly a damaging wind threat with some gust in excess of 60 miles an hour. I also wouldn't be surprised to see a conditional threat for a couple of weak tornadoes in front of this, as it is going to be along a cold front in front of that mesoscale convective system, which has a tendency to stretch our vertical wind profiles and provide some favorable shear then there is going to be some troughing also helping to aid these storms another area which would see initiation around midday would be back in our upper plains convergence zone these storms could pose the threat of some hail possibly being even sizable around a little over one inch in diameter and then some damaging gust in excess of 60 miles an hour moving a bit northeastward into our great lakes risk area we're going to see pretty much the same story with a lot of remnant mesoscale convective vortexes along that cold front but there is going to be some more favorable deep layer flow from our front up here and especially that tropping activity and that is why there is that conditional threat for some strong to potentially severe gust up here in parts of wisconsin michigan really that greater great lakes area and i think there is the conditional threat of possibly a weak spin-up tornado with these as well and the hail threat with these is going to be pretty low, but it's not going to be zero, but I wouldn't really expect to see any hail greater than one inch in diameter. And this threat of severe weather is mostly going to be over by the evening hours, and they're just going to turn into some large rainmakers. Now here's a look at our 500 millibar winds, and immediately we're going to see that one of the main culprits for our storm initiation strengthening and organization today is going to be a big trough pushing over parts of the northern U.S. And we're going to see a couple of kinks in our trough or jet stream. One is going to be over that main risk area in Kansas into Iowa around the midday hours and then we're just going to see 
a couple of kinks up here in our Great Lakes risk area near Michigan, which is going to be reason for the possibility of a couple of storms being more organized, being initiated, and even being strong. Here is our storm environment in front of that MCV in parts of Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, that sort of corridor. And the main things we're going to see today are a very moist environment with a 75 dew point, a pretty extremely unstable environment nearing 5,000 Cape and quite a bit of 3 Cape at around 168. Another thing to note would be a pretty high precipitation water of 2 inches, which could help to feel that threat for some damaging winds with some stronger downdrafts and also help to feel that threat of some flooding in the region, but mainly because we have a very unstable atmosphere and a very moist atmosphere in front of a cold front and remnant MCV, there is going to be that conditional threat for severe weather and I think potentially even all hazards although that threat of hail and a couple of tornadoes would be pretty low. And our second environment that I'm looking at is going to be up here in Michigan where again we're going to see a very moist environment 76 dew point an environment nearing 5,000 cape. I do think this could be inflated a little bit by this model but I still think it's going to be a extremely unstable environment up there in Michigan. And then our three cape is going to be 177 so all things which are extremely high extremely unstable and extremely favorable for severe weather in front of that cold front and MCV. Another thing to know is that our lowest cloud level is going to be a bit lower, which could potentially support that threat for a couple of spin-up tornadoes. And our deep layer shear is going to be 30 knots, which could lead to a couple of more organized storms. The last thing I'm going to note is that we do have some dry air loft, which could feel that threat for some damaging gusts. And then one more thing is that I do think a hail threat could definitely be outlined or realized up here. I don't think it would be much greater than one inch in diameter, but I definitely think it's there because our lapse rates aren't gonna be too poor at around 7.3 Celsius decrease per kilometer. We do have some cape up near, near our freezing level. And then because our deep layer shear is gonna be 30 knots, I do think there's the possibility of a couple of stronger updrafts, although it's mostly expected to be a linear and messy storm mode. So I think the threat of some large hail would be pretty conditional and I don't really think we'd see anything greater than one inch in diameter up here in the Great Lakes region.